pd.com and putting in the code. There are I three icons you can choose from. It doesn't matter which one you use. And we want you to drag and drop those icons to pick your favorite Christmas movie. And as you guys are picking this, I know that some of you might be uh, remembering that um, at every Christmas dinner, there is a huge debate on is Die Hard really a Christmas movie? All right, it looks like we got a lot of Home Alones, a lot of Elves. My favorite is Christmas Vacation. I see a lot of love actually. <laughs> awesome. So you can use Pear Deck to make some interactives and um, including check-ins to see how your students are doing using these type of drag and drop icons. All right, we're ready to move on. I'm gonna let Kirsten take it, take this one. All right, before we get started with you, Matter, I want to remind you also that Pear Deck, if you use Google Slides, is an add-in that you can use um, as a feature in your Google Slides when you're creating Google Slides for your students when you're doing synchronous sessions. Or um, you can do it in, and have it where it's an asynchronous event that students can interact with um, that you can embed with and they go at their own pace. So you, Matter, let's stop and consider all the things that you are and do on do for online learning for, for students and colleagues. So think about all of the things that you are doing for online learning and students and colleagues. And if you could just comment in the chat, maybe some things that you are doing um, for students and for colleagues right now in online learning. How are you impacting both students and colleagues through the process of being an, an online educator. All right, so I am seeing a lot of different things in here um, from meeting basic personal needs to accountability to building relationships, which um, I'm sure you all have discovered that building relationships, while it is, it's different from face-to-face, -face, it is possible. And it sometimes surprises you probably how different it is, but some of the ways that your relationships maybe go deeper and maybe kids that... Um, you may not have in a face-to-face -face environment, very, very open, have been willing to share because they feel a little bit safer because there's a little bit of anonymity in an online setting. So communicating through emails, peer-to-peer um, -peer connections in class, which is really important. So you guys are really doing some great things, fostering creativity and innovative thinking. This is some, this is great feedback. You guys are doing some fabulous things. 
And so I wanted to remind you of that. As you wrote what you wrote, you probably saw something somebody else wrote and say, oh, I do that too. And it reminded you of the many great things that you're doing. And I wanted to kind of frame that. And um, Rainbow, if you can go to the next slide. And one of the things that, um, so before I came to the position that I'm in now, I was the, the director of curriculum and instruction with Virtual Arkansas. And one of the things that really frustrated me when I would be in conversations with people that did not understand online learning is, oh, well, you can't really have a, a really good relationship with kids in an online environment, it's just not the same. And I saw some profound relationships and some amazing things that happen with students in an online environment. And so I wanted to remind you guys that it's the teacher that makes the difference, not the classroom or the environment that you're in. And so you guys are making a difference every day with what you're doing and um, you know, hush the haters, right? You guys are doing a great job. So I um, wanted to share that with you. All right, next slide. So one of the things that um, I wanted to give you guys is an analogy because uh, online learning takes a different kind of mindset. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to share with you is the snow globe analogy. Sometimes we feel like the whole world is shaken up and everything is upside down and our equilibrium is off. Much like when someone you're inside the snow globe if you're inside the snow globe, you are experiencing or seeing things from inside the snow globe, everything seems like chaos. But if we're able to step back for a minute and look outside the snow globe, what we see is a very per pretty or beautiful image. Um, one of my favorite things to do is sh shake a snow globe and then set it down and watch it fall. Um, but when we're inside the snow globe, we're experiencing all the shake. But when we're outside of it, we see the impact that it makes on others and ourselves. So I wanted to ask you this question. Are you seeing things from outside the snow globe or inside the snow globe? And I'm going to move into the next piece is sometimes when we feel like we're inside the snow globe, <laughs> I would agree sometimes it is both for sure. And it is hard to take a step back and it may depend on the day. And that's why it's really important to have others around us and that would not be isolated because sometimes we're inside the snow globe and we need someone to pull us out of the snow globe and see it from the other side. And that's why it's so important for us not to get isolated. So part of sometimes pulling ourselves out of the snow globe is taking a break. So I wanted to share with you the next slide. And Rainbow, I hope we checked for sound before we shared. If not, we'll need to stop and share. a spacious Verbo summer home with a pool big enough for the most epic. I'm very excited because I've just finished all my home and Christmas gifts for my friends. I thought I would give you some suggestions too because they're easy gifts and your friends are going to love them. What I do is I go to the Walmarts and I get some uh, mason jars. They're like a dollar and then I fill them with people things people love. I call them uh, jars of love. So I just have some suggestions for you. The first is my um, crunchy jar of love. It's Chex Mix. And you, the good thing about this is you can act like you were up all night long making Chex Mix, but really you just poured a bag of Chex Mix in here. So this is a great crunchy jar of love. This one's um, one of everybody's favorites too. This is chocolatey jar of love. It's some uh, hot chocolate and some marshmallows and some chocolate chips. It makes a great um, uh, big old pot of hot chocolate. And the good thing about this is um, hot chocolate is kind of expensive, so you can just buy like an 88 cent box of Betty Crocker chocolate um, cake mix and pour it in, and it makes it a lot less expensive. Um, uh, you don't need to worry about your friends being mad because they're just going to re-gift this. 
and then that person's going to regift it. Really should be called the regift and jar of love, but this is a great one to give also. This is my southern jar of love. Um, everybody's going to love this too. It's mashed potatoes um, and some green beans and two chicken legs. It's my southern jar of love. And then I put some um, some circus peanuts right there for dessert because everybody loves some circus peanuts. So that's a great jar of love too. And then this is a jar of love straight from heaven. It's um, some tater tots and some Brianna sausage and some chocolate pudding. It's like an appetizer, a main course, and some dessert. It's like being at the Applebee's. So that's a great jar of love to make too. So here's some suggestions for you to make um, homemade gifts for your friends. They're gonna love it. It'd be like being Martha Stewart. All right, I know that everybody uh, needed a tip on maybe some gift giving and I thought I would help out there for a minute. But one of the things that I think that when we're inside the snow globe, if we have the opportunity oh, to just, laugh. Wait, 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 hold on one second, please. Hey, honey, why you lay? Write your name right here. Why you lay? Oh. Your daddy was pooping. No, <laughs> Hang don't on write second. that down there. Just... Whoops. <laughs> but one of the things is, is that if we can take a moment and laugh, if we can find the humor in things, um, or if we just watch ourselves um, a little bit of Jerry Brooks, um, I think we can always, it helps us to lighten the mood. And we know that um, a good belly laugh is actually a stress reliever. Um, so uh, if you can find a way to laugh with your colleagues or find a good belly laugh, that will help relieve the stress. Um, Rainbow, would you go to the next slide for me, please? So, I did another comparison and I said, how are Rudolph and online learning alike? No one wanted to let uh, online learning play in brick and mortar reindeer games. Then one sunny spring day in 2019, we all know what happened. And now we were, they want to play games with us. So I wanted to just share some insight or uh, some encouragement with you guys with this. Um, I wanted to remind you guys that in education from a history perspective, we've been doing face-to-face -face learning for thousands of years. And uh, we are still perfecting the practice in face-to-face. -face. Online learning, we've only been doing for about 20 years. And we are still in the infancy of online learning. There is an urgency to make online learning the very best it can be to provide quality instruction to our students. However, I encourage you all to take a deep breath. This is a place of uncertainty and unknowns. It is also a place of innovation. And to grow in this area, we have to be vulnerable. So there is no room for perfection in this place. In online learning, it is messy and it is okay to be messy. It is okay to learn and share in our mistakes. If we come to the table, pretending to be perfect, we can't help each other grow. If you can progress to the next slide, Rainbow. So one of the things when I came into online learning is that I learned very quickly, if I'm gonna connect with my teachers and my students in an online environment, I had to understand vulnerability. And vulnerability is the absolute heartbeat of innovation and creativity. There can be zero innovation without uh, vulnerability, and that's by Brene Brown. And uh, she is one of my uh, biggest influencers for me as I help people in the online environment. I want to read to you a portion from um, Daring Greatly, How Courage to be Vulnerable Transforms the Way We Live, Parent, and Lead. The secret killer of innovation is shame. You can't measure it, but it's there. Every time someone back on a new idea, fails to give their manager much needed feedback, and is afraid to speak up in front of a client, you can be sure shame played a part. That deep fear that we all have of being wrong, of being belittled, and of feeling less than is what stops us taking the very risk required to move our companies forward, and in this case, our students forward. If you want a culture of creativity and innovation, where sensible risks are embraced, on both a market and individual level, start by developing the ability of managers, in this case, students and teachers, to cultivate an openness of, to vulnerability in their teams. And this paradoxically perhaps is the answer. 
This requires first that they are vulnerable with themselves. This notion that the leader needs to be in charge and know all the answers is both dated and destructive. It impacts on others. Its impact on others is the sense that they know less and that they are less than. A recipe for risk aversion, if ever I heard it. Shame becomes fear. Fear leads to risk aversion. Risk aversion kills innovation. And I just wanted to share that with you all because you guys every day in online learning are taking great risk. And I want to encourage you to continue to take those risks. What you do as we started this portion of our PLC was letting you know how much you matter. You all are so important to the work that we are doing to make sure that we are equitably providing education in a multiple formats. You are just as important as that face-to-face -face teacher in the classroom. And what you're doing is providing opportunity that students who might likely either um, not go to school at all or may not engage as well because they, that's the performance they best learn in. You are providing them something that they otherwise would not have. And it is critical as we move forward both um, in your district, but also as a state and in the nation that online learning continues to take a front and precedent place in education if we're gonna continue to meet the, kit the needs of all students. So I wanted to leave you with that um, and Rainbow, our next slide. So the next piece, Rainbow's going to take over, and this is where you guys are going to get the opportunity to chat among yourselves. But no, by all means, go ahead, skip the ad. Any creator of anything knows this feeling. You experience someone else's innovative work. It's beautiful, brilliant, breathtaking. You're stunned. Their ideas are unexpected and surprising, but perfect. You think, I never would have thought about that. How do they even come up with that? It's genius. Afterwards, you think, my ideas are so obvious. I'll never be as inventive as that. I get this feeling often. Amazing books, music, movies, or even amazing conversations. I'm in awe at how the creator thinks like that. I'm humbled. But I continue to do my work. I tell my little tales. I share my point of view. Nothing spectacular, just my ordinary thoughts. So one day someone emailed me and said, I never would have thought about that. How did you even come up with that? It's genius. <laughs> of course, I disagreed, and I explained why it was nothing special. But afterwards, I realized something surprisingly profound. Everybody's ideas seem obvious to them. I'll bet even John Coltrane or Richard Feynman felt that everything they were playing or saying was pretty obvious. So maybe what's obvious to me is amazing to someone else. Hit songwriters in interviews often admit that their most successful hit song was one they just thought was stupid and not even worth recording. We're clearly a bad judge of our own creations. We should just put it out and let the world decide. Are you holding back something that seems too obvious to share? So we wanted to leave this video with you guys before we break up into chat groups um, and breakout sessions, because I, I wanna encourage you to be vulnerable. And I wanna encourage you to share out things that you're thinking about, because what you may think is ordinary may be amazing to someone else. And you may do something that influences or inspires them that will impact the students in their, their classroom, just like your ideas are doing a, having a positive impact on the students in your classroom. So please uh, keep that in mind. Um, as we share, there are, there are no bad ideas in, in this time. And this is a time for you guys to really open up with one another, connect with one another, and find ways to encourage and inspire one another. So Rainbow. Okay, so we're gonna do breakout rooms and we have them broken down into bands. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen real quick and I'm gonna set up the breakout rooms. So we have grades K through two, you can join yourself in that, in that um, breakout room and Kirsten will be facilitating that. 
um, grades three through five, um, you can join that one. And that one is being facilitated by Katie. And then grades six through eight will be facilitated by Amanda and I will facilitate grades nine through 12. So go ahead and join the breakout room that where you spend most of your instructional time. I know some, some of you may do more than one grade, but choose the best room for you. And then we'll have some guiding questions. Um, someone is going to report back um, what your group came up with and uh, when we come back after the breakout room. So let's do this. I think we're gonna do it for about 20 minutes and um, I'm opening all the rooms now. Did we leave? I think we did. We were just the first to follow directions. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey. We were first followers. <laughs> we are little followers. Have you guys ever seen the video about the first follower? <laughs> okay. Do we want to watch I'm it? Gonna, I'm going to save that if when we do our next PLC and I'll share you with you guys about the first follower. It's pretty good. Welcome back. I think some of us are still coming back. So just give us a few more minutes to get everybody back here. I hope you guys had a great time in your groups. Emily, thank you for capturing some of ours that didn't get into a group. Appreciate that. And that, that also uh, helped us understand there's a little protocol that we probably or procedure that we need to have in place that we didn't. So um, I'm just gonna be completely transparent, but we didn't anticipate someone not being able to get into a group and we didn't have somebody that was, uh, both the host and the co-host were facilitating groups and we probably should have made one of our other people that was staying back that was not in a group, a host or co-host as well. So that if we had an issue with someone getting to a group, they could help out, so. Lesson learned. I'm sure you guys- and You're usually the tech support. You don't always plan on having someone else be your own tech support, right? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so thank you, Emily, for doing that. I appreciate that. You want me to bring them all back, Kirsten? Yeah, yeah if you want to, because Rainbow, Rainbow, I think, is still in the group and she may, she's so sweet, she may be having trouble bringing them together, together and bring them back. back. Cool. It's closing in 54 seconds, so we'll give them a few minutes to finish up their thoughts. I think it gives you a warning, right? <laughs> There's Rainbow. Hey, Rainbow. We are just talking about you. <laughs> You're muted. She didn't hear you say all good things, Kirsten. I said, oh, <laughs> all good things. <laughs> We just said you're okay, sorry. When people, they've got to end their conversation. So, okay. Rainbow, on this, um, do you want um, us to go by gray band to share out? I think that sounds really good. Okay. Do we want to progress to the next slide? Yeah. Well, K through two, Laura got voluntold by her group but she graciously accepted. And I wanna just say thank you, Laura, first of all, for sharing out. And she was great at facilitating conversation, but uh, Laura, share out what K through two talked about. I mean, just the big, the big point. Um, we just talked about how, um, well, like our celebrations were just like having those good conversations with the parents and, um, and you know, being able, having the time, like to be able to, you know, connect with kids one on one, having the time to do that. And then one of the challenges um, for me was like proximity. Um, you know, being able to, you know, in the classroom, you can go and stand next to the kid who's kind of bouncing off the wall, where it's it's a little harder to do that. Um, and then we talked about how. Um, you know, something that we would tell somebody coming in is just to be prepared for change um, because it's constantly changing and evolving. Awesome. Um, how about three through five? 
Yeah, it looks like in the chat, Alicia said that she would volunteer. And thank you, Alicia. Absolutely. Um, I think some of the main things we talked about, um, challenges of getting students to complete assignments and working with small group students who need that targeted intervention. And a lot of our celebrations were how some students were not successful in face-to-face -face because of maybe behavior issues, but the virtual environment is, you know, really great for them and a good place for them to learn. And the family relationships was huge, just the difference in family communication. And that was also something that we would wanna tell a future virtual teacher is that you don't realize the explicit instruction the levels of instruction you're having to do for the students, but not only for them, but for families and parents, and that making mistakes is okay, that you don't have to record your videos 8,000 times to make them perfect, because if you were face to face, it would not be perfect, that you know, you're going to slip up and you would just keep going. So those were, um, and then our greatest needs, we were talking about the supplies for the students and the manipulatives and there's those different pieces that you would normally have right there with you but you don't have that and the online tools you know that we could use that's awesome i really love that what came in out of your discussion in the three through five grade band what about six through eight I'm still waiting for a volunteer. I don't know if somebody's going to speak up or not. <laughs> I tried to try to get them to. I will. Thank you, Ashley. Thank so, you. I... Go ahead. Okay, so for 6-8, we, we did a practice in pretending to be our students and we got really awkward and clammy on Zoom and uh, we fought over who you know had to do this, I'm kidding. But so we did talk about some challenges being, um, you know, well, let's start with the good. Okay, so we talked about how we're getting to know parents in different ways, um, deeper and more authentically perhaps. We talked about getting to know students because we're, we are getting to know so much of that background and their home lives and their interests and you know without some of the barriers. Um, challenges, most people echoed something along the lines of balancing and getting everything done and wearing the multiple hats that often comes with this. You know, almost all of us on the Zoom um, don't, we don't get to show up and just teach all day right? Like there's, everyone's doing different things and, and that is something different for virtual. Thank you, Ashley, for sharing. And that is some really um, good things that you guys thought about. And I love how you said we all um, pretended to be like our students and get all clammy. <laughs> and that that is true um, because when we lead professional development and we open up for discussions and stuff um, in a virtual a PD, we, we see the same thing. Um, and so it, it's okay. It is intimidating, especially when you don't know people. And that's part of that building those relationships. So kids start to feel more comfortable when they share rainbow nine through 12. You got All a right. we, I tried to get one. Um, does anybody want to talk about what we talked about in the breakout for nine twelve? If not, I have some great notes so I can share out. Um, so the biggest challenges um, that we talked about were engagement, um, making a connection and getting participation, and then also self-care. Um, the greatest celebrations was when you can get all stakeholders working as a team and then when students come back and say, that was fun. Um, our um, advice to other online teachers that are new to the profession would be that a lot of work goes on the front end to make it easier on the back end. And that um, it takes a lot of time and abnormal schedule to work as an online teacher. Um, and then 
the greatest needs were um, reliable technology, more time. Um, some felt that the districts might need to reevaluate um, the online teacher's schedule and job duties. Um, and that's what we came up with. Those are some awesome things that, that you guys come up with. And I, um, I see some similarities in each group. And then I also see some things that are unique to each grade band. So I'm glad that we had the opportunity to kind of personalize your time today. Um, Rainbow, if you want to progress to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you seeing so, my screen? Yes, ma'am. I want to remind us all that the most valuable resource that all teachers have is each other. And without collaboration, our growth is limited to our own perspectives. And today I hope that you are walking away with a little bit different perspective because of the time that you've um, had with one another. I also hope that you all are able to um, find a way to connect with one another. If you should want to connect with someone that's here, remember the chat and um, you can connect with other people in the chat and exchange information that way. Or if you don't have the time now, but you'd like to, you can reach out to us and then we can facilitate that, get permission from one another and then connect you guys as well. Because we want for you guys to continue to have unofficial PLC or collaboration time with one another outside of the time that we provide for you. Really, this was our way of trying to help connect you guys so that you didn't feel so isolated or alone um, because there's nothing worse than doing something as uh, innovative and risk-taking as what you guys are and feeling like you're on an island by yourself. Um, that's a very alone feeling. And really, as we go into the holidays, I know that some of you may have been in a brick and mortar and you I know that between Thanksgiving and Christmas can be very stressful in a brick and mortar, but there's also all these things that happen um, in a brick and mortar during that time. And maybe some of you are feeling a little bit isolated or not having that connection that you had before. And I just want you to know that this is a way to connect and it may be different, but it could be a good different. Um, so our next slide. So what we wanted to know now is, do you think we should continue to meet as a PLC? You can go ahead and answer in the chat um, if you want. If you have an opinion. If not, okay. Um, we do have an exit ticket um, that we're going to provide where we can gather more information about people's availabilities and their needs for support and their ideas. And so I'm going to go hey, pull Rainbow, that up. Yeah. Can I just ask, what, since we're going to, uh, if we're going to be gathering people and maybe and wanting to know if they just want to pop their, some of them are putting their emails and information in the chat. If you're okay with mm -hmm. us building a, a, maybe something where we can connect you networking wise, Put, put your information in the chat that way we know that you're okay with it and that will be your is that okay I just thought that might help you get a ahead for the connection later some are popping their stuff in there to connect with everyone or that way you can at least just see who you who you were connected talking with and you'll have their emails and stuff in the chat in the chat yeah okay awesome um and I can probably share out the chat along with the video so that you actually have a hard copy of these email addresses. There were um, a few of us in our program last year that had a, um, a PLC once a month with other virtual teachers with just within our area and just having time carved out time to talk about what they're doing and what they're not doing, what's working and what's not. It was, it took 20, 30 minutes once a month and it was so beneficial yesterday or last year when everybody just seemed like they were drowning. So anybody who's even half considering like, oh, it might be kind of an okay thing. It was very, very beneficial last year. Okay, I'm going to grab the exit ticket. It'll take me just a second because uh, I did not have it already pulled out. And while she's grabbing the exit ticket, Sarah, thank you for sharing that. That's those, we actually had a school, a virtual academy reach out to us and ask us if we could do this. And um, knowing that you had that in place last year and guys, we know just based on Hattie's work and also Solution Tree, 
that teacher collective efficacy is the greatest effect size on student success. And that, and I know that that's designed within a, you know, a school itself, but I think we could have the same impact if we work together, even if our kids are in different places, because for us at the DLU, all students in Arkansas are our students. It doesn't matter if your students at Springdale, or if your students at Siloam Springs, or your students at a virtual academy in Southeast Arkansas, they're all our students. And we want for you guys to have those resources with one another and support each other across the state of Arkansas. And you probably have some virtual students that are not in your regional location because they use school choice to attend your virtual academy. Okay, here we go. Rainbow, do you want to remind them that the exit ticket when they complete it, what, what they also get? Yes, good reminder. So once you fill out this exit ticket, you will get emailed a certificate for your attendance today. Um, and it's two hours. So be sure that you give feedback and we'll try to um, make this better next time. I'm going to go ahead and put my information in here too. So once you grab the link for the exit ticket, um, if you guys, I know you have things to do and places to go, we really appreciate the two hours that you've spent with us today and we hope that it was beneficial to you. We also hope that this was a time that we fed back into you and lifted your spirits and helped you get through the next um, eight days. I think most of you guys finish up um, on the 17th. And so just give you the energy and the inspiration and the encouragement to make it through um, and, um, and get that time with your families over the holiday season. Um, Rainbow, you want to share with them the next slide? I think yes, the next slide. So are there any questions or just comments that you want to make um, based off of what we talked about today? I just want to say um, our group, the 3-5 group, we had a lot of good discussion. Um, and one of the things that we did talk about was time and everyone's time is valuable. Um, and so whenever you fill out the exit ticket, you know, be be specific about the things that you need and the things that you um, are looking to get out of the PLC. That way we can, you know, help tailor discussions and, and activities and things like that to to best serve you guys and, and make sure that you get the most out of that time together um, to collaborate. All right, with that, next slide, Rainbow. So, even though this is a hectic time of year, it's my favorite time of year. So any chance I have to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, um, I want to share that with you. We, uh, you also can find there our, um, our link to if you want to contact us for more specific support. We provide this PLC for you guys, but we also, that's why our digital learning specialists are here so that they can provide you just-in-time support. So if you're specifically needing something or you're wanting to work on something and you want to um, just hash that out with us, or if you are an administrator that attended today and you are looking to support your teachers in some way and you want to work with us to partner for some sort of professional learning um, or work just one-on-one -on -one with teachers, we are more than happy to do that. Um, our team is a, a cohesive group with a skill set that is extremely varied. So if you've got a problem, we probably have a solution. 